This is the Tom Hartman Program. Greetings, my friends, patriots, lovers of democracy, truth, and justice, believers in peace, freedom, and the American way. A lot going on in the world today uh, that we are going to get to as we go through the program today. The, uh, uh, and, and, and by the way, the, uh, <laughs> this, this is very strange, but this is what's going on. Our uh, call screen computer this morning decided uh, that it was going to do a Windows update. And so <laughs> it's shut down. So I won't be able to take calls for a little bit here. We've got the phone lines locked out. I'll tell you when I unlock them. Uh, but, you know, life in the big city, right? Mitt Romney tweets, Robert Jeffress, this is the uh, right-wing bigot who Trump chose to do the invocation prayer this morning in Jerusalem at the, uh, I don't know, if inauguration or investment or I, whatever the right word is for what you do to open an embassy, uh, in, uh, as the United States moved its embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Uh, he said, Robert Jeffress says you can't be saved by being a Jew, and Mormonism is a heresy from the pit of hell. And uh, Jeffers did say these things. He said them in 2011 at the uh, vote, Values Voter Summit, which is a, a notorious place where white right-wing bigots get together. And uh, Jeffers responded with his own treat, tweet. He says, salvation is through Christ alone. Right. But there's a, there's a larger issue here and, and a larger picture of what's going on. Uh, a few weeks ago, 21st of March, was uh, a month and a half ago, was the uh, anniversary of the 1960 Sharpeville Massacre. The Sharpeville Massacre, the, in, in, in South Africa, there were, there were towns and communities where if you were black or colored or you know, a, any of the various categories other than white, you could not leave. You had to stay in those towns. If you did leave, you had to have a pass, you had to have a permit to leave and you know time in some cases even to go shopping and things like that and uh, it was just you know this this apartheid was just intolerable to the black South Africans and so on 2021 20, March 1960 a group uh, formed in front of the uh, police station in the uh, Transvaal is a state in South Africa the Sharpeville is the town in the Transvaal or in Transville, and a crowd of five to 7,000 people, which ultimately grew to as many as 20,000, were protesting the fact that they had to use these passes, the pass laws, to get out of Sharpeville because they were locked in because of the apartheid laws. And the police opened fire on them, and they killed 69 people, including, and, and they injured 289, they shot, and, but didn't kill fatally, 289 people, including 29 children. Today in South Africa, March 21st, is celebrated as a public holiday to honor both human rights and the memory of those people who were killed. Now, not only did the local police open fire, but the government of South Africa brought in fire. They had uh, four Saracen armored personnel car carriers. They had police sharpshooters. Uh, they were using Sten submachine guns and Lee Enfield rifles. The Sharpeville people were armed with nothing more than rocks and slingshots. And the government of South Africa ran F-86 Sabre jets and Harvard trainers a few hundred feet over the ground. Now, they did not drop bombs or ordnance, but they just, you know, they were trying to scatter the crowd. Now, this was considered, you know, by the world. The world was horrified by this. I mean, just, just shocked by this. And in fact, the United Nations passed a resolution condemning it. Uh, the, on the 30th of March, South Africa as a nation declared a state of emergency. They, they rounded up 18,000 people. And this was really a turning point. This was the thing that radicalized Nelson Mandela. Prior, prior to Sharp Bill, Nelson Mandela had been saying, we can work things out peacefully. But Sharpeville said basically to black South Africans, this government has no interest in peace with you. This government simply wants to keep you in, a, in, in, in prison, basically, in this apartheid state. And uh, this also led to the banning of the African National Council, uh, Congress, the, the political party that Mandela was part of, and, and, and led to Mandela's imprisonment. 
Here in the United States, while politicians condemned it, including Jack Kennedy, the Mississippi House of Representatives, the Republicans loved it, or at least the Southern, actually it would have been the Southern Democrats in 1960. The, uh, shall we say the conservatives, the Mississippi House of Representatives voted a resolution supporting the South African government, quote, for its steadfast policy of segregation and staunch adherence to their traditions in the face of overwhelming external agitation. Now, I tell you about the Sharpeville Massacre uh, because it was a major turning point in the history of South Africa that ultimately led to peace in South Africa, led to a Truth and Reconciliation Commission, led to, you know, many years later, and this was in 1960, led to Nelson Mandela becoming ultimately the president of South Africa. Now, I doubt that anybody can imagine, and I can't either, frankly, that someday a Palestinian from Gaza will end up the president of Israel. But ending apartheid might be a really good idea. Today, Israeli troops killed dozens of Palestinians. Actually, the death toll is now over 41 as protests as U.S. Embassy opens in Jerusalem. Now, what happened with the U.S. Embassy is that back in 1999, here in the United States, Congress passed a legislation, and I believe Bill Clinton signed it, saying that the U.S. would recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. I mean, you know, that's where their government is, that's where their parliament is, the Knesset, uh, it's where the prime ministers and presidents' homes are. But most of the rest of the governments of the world, see, the, the, there is not a single European country that is supporting us and that's moving their embassy to Israel, for example. Most of the governments of the world maintain their embassies in Tel Aviv, and the legislation in 1999 establishing, you know, the U.S. policy as Jerusalem being the capital has this uh, six-month waiver in it, which says, you know, the president doesn't have to do this, and every six months he can say, I'm not going to do it for another six months. And every president since Bill Clinton has been using that waiver as leverage to, to the, on the Israelis to say, work something out with the Palestinians. And when you work something out, and, and up until recently, it's, the two-state solution has been the thing that has been held as the highest value, the, the, the most likely to succeed thing. Until you have a two-state solution, we're not going to actually move our embassy. And when, when you do have a two-state solution, Israel, because the big thing that you want is the United States and ultimately the European countries and the rest of the developed world to acknowledge that Jerusalem is your capital. When you've worked something out with the Palestinians, we'd be glad to do that. So Trump comes along and says, you know, I don't care about policy. Sheldon Adelson is going to give $30 million to the Republican Party. And what he wants is for us to move the capital to Jerusalem. Sheldon Adelson, who... Uh, made $670 million in his tax break, in the GOP tax scam. They gave, the, the, our government is giving Sheldon Adelson $670 million. He is kicking back 30 million of it to the Republican Party. And he's in Israel right now for the opening of the embassy. This, this is, uh, you know, pretty strange stuff. It's like we are ignoring years and years and years of history. We're ignoring what's going on.